Welcome to the Operate Intelligently podcast, the podcast for all things operations. Hello, Operate Intelligently listeners. I am really excited to be in the beautiful city of Houston today uh, at a conference, and I was able to grab an old friend and very knowledgeable in the custodial and cleaning space, Greg Lookabow, and uh, we're going to spend the next 20 or 25 minutes talking about what everybody's talking about, uh, which is the coronavirus, but not just the coronavirus, but pandemics in general and things that operations professionals and their teams should be looking at, considering, uh, implementing, or possibly already implemented, and that they they need to just put some public outreach out there so people are aware of what's going on, because most of the time people don't see those cleaning supplies unless they smell them. So first of all, Greg, welcome. Um, I want you to say your company, because I got, I know it's Kings, but the whole, the whole tagline of it, and then we'll get right into some of this discussion, and I appreciate you giving us some of your knowledge on, on this topic. Well, thank you, Josh, and thanks for the opportunity. I'm Greg Lookabow, and I work for the Kings, Intelligent Cleaning for Health. And uh, it's good to be here, and I look forward to discussing some of the things that we face in our environments, indoor environments today. Well, and, and how long have you been in the cleaning maintenance facility space? So this is my 38th year of being in, uh, in facilities and in the facility enterprise, the educational enterprise. And I've worked uh, across the country in many different states. And custodial services is just one of the many things that I've learned. I appreciate. I understand what they do. I know the challenges that they face. But uh, there's a lot of good things they do to prevent a lot of the issues that arise. And we don't want to talk about that today. So being around as long as you've been around, uh, you know, these things happen, pandemic, scares, uh, SARS, Ebola in 2014. A lot of people, I mean, we're here in Texas, and I brought that up in a talk today. I said, do you guys remember what you did for Ebola in 2014? It was in Dallas uh, that, the, that the person that tested positive was, was brought into. And I can remember, because I flew into Dallas, and I, I had the car service that picked me up. The guy came out, and he stuck a, a thermometer on my forehead, and it was a cell-equipped thermometer that they had to test themselves and every passenger and then lice all the car down every single time so these proactive measures are, are put into place when something happens but let's let's step back i mean in reality all the stuff that you're doing the training and the, the support with your team that they do um we're preparing for this epidemic even when epidemics pandemics disease is happening we're preparing for that you know what would you say or uh um, how could we prepare more? Should we prepare more? Do you think we're well prepared with our efforts day to day before the news hits? You know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think uh, one of the first questions is, are we prepared? And that's a that's a good question. And the question and the answer is, are we prepared for what? Because typically, what we do in custodial services is that we work to keep that indoor environment conducive to learning. We clean touch points. We use many types of disinfectants and sanitizers. We use many types of cleaning products. We have to deal with dwell times. And a lot of things happen. We have to deal with staph infections. We have to deal with indoor environment conditions and diseases that may come. And understand that in the educational enterprise, custodial services supplies millions of students, thousands and hundreds of students come into one place all day long moving within that one place touching things and sneezing and coughing we don't just deal with viruses we deal with lice we deal with staff we deal with colds and flu and so the challenge of maintaining a safe indoor environment becomes very challenging because of the population that moves within the world of education yeah you just said a whole bunch of things you know, bloodborne pathogens uh, is another one uh, that I hear, you know, kind of out there. Um, you know, this is so far beyond, you know, pushing a broom with a spray and having a spray can and a roll of paper towels, right? So, you know, you, the antimicrobials and all these things that, that you guys use day to day. You know, one of the things that I, that I practice, try to practice with people to say, tell your story, share your story, let the world know what it is that you do. What are, what do you think the best, th some of the best things or best practices 
custodial teams, maintenance teams can do to really kind of promote the, the prevention practices and also educate the prevention practices that you're doing. So in promoting the prevention ha practices, like what do you think the best way to get people to wash their hands is, other than tell them to wash their hands, is there something? We're in here in this trade show area, and every 10 feet I walk, there's a poster on the wall, right? There's a bulletin board. There's something that's showing us how to actually wash your hands. And you sit there and go, man, is common sense really not that common that we have to know how to wash our hands? But are there practices that you're seeing or that you would say outreach for people to do themselves? And then is there something that we as operations professionals could be doing more of or better to really showcase and talk about all of the measures that you're taking? Like I just sat in this class. And I'm, I'm hearing about these e-misters and these these uh, scrubbers. Uh, I can't remember what the name of the thing is, but it's, it's I mean, antimicrobial specialized scrubbers that kills everything, right? And devices that you put into a room and through ultraviolet or, um, in, I can't remember what it was, but it blasts the room and you, you can't even be in there. It kills everything. Um, I didn't know people were doing this. So there's a two-part question, you know. What do you think people could be doing more to get people to, you know, our, our clients, customers, be doing more in awareness? And then what do you think, do you think we're doing enough sharing that, what, what, what you're doing, what your team's doing, and can we do better with that? So, Josh, I think uh, one of the things that's important is when you talk about what we do, how we do it, what equipments, equipment we use, and the techniques in which we do some of the things. So first of all, let's just talk about the typical cleaning process. One of the things that I think is missing in today's custodial world is standardized processes. Standardizing processes brings a clarity into what people should be doing. It's not just as simple as dusting a wall. It's not just as simple as cleaning a commode. Because the, multiple, the multitude of people who are touching and the bloodborne pathogens and all the things that are involved. You know, we have new products today. We have new disinfectants that, that people say are EPA approved and EPA this. We have multiple sanitizers. We have multiple air devices that can be placed in, in um, air conditioning systems. We have peroxide machines. We have thermistors. We have misting devices. And we have so many things, and some of these things just pop up as soon as a, a outbreak of something happens. And so I always say that every time you implement a tool, you implement another task. And so what do I mean by that? Well, today we sat in a workshop, as Josh, you said, and we hear about these thermistor products that can blow out a product that is electrified, and it can gather and and clean and, and kill diseases or germs or viruses on touch points within a building. But you have to talk about frequencies because once I do that, what's the resilient time frame in which that product remains and when those students return back to the classroom, are we now beginning to retouch that surface that was cleaned and are we beginning to recontaminate that surface again? Yes, it is important that every time students enter a building for the start of school, that building should be cleaned, and there's a process in which that happens. Because when you take a custodian, and many times we base what a custodian can do in a certain time frame at some square footage, what happens is one home, a standard home in Texas is about 1,800 square feet. And we're asking a custodian to clean 25 to 28,000 square feet a night. Well, you just divide that by 18 and you're asking someone to clean multiple homes with 30 to 40, 50 people in each home in an eight hour period. It's not always accomplished. So some of the things that we're doing to improve, one of the things is building a process that teaches people to task clean not area clean, not zone clean, but task clean to specific tasks which require specific tools, certain products that accomplish the task at hand and that is cleaning, intelligently, intelligently cleaning a building for health, not appearance. Mm -hmm. And there's a big difference, Josh, because you can go to uh, restaurants and places and see people wiping down tables and look over at the side and the water they're using is as dirty as Yep. anything however the surface may look clean 
So professional custodial services goes well beyond that. Let's talk about some of the new products that are out there, like forecare products that have disease-fighting compounds in them now. We have the thermistors I talked about. We have uh, Tyvek machines that spray all these products. We have all these things, but the most important thing is we have to also protect our workers. Mm -hmm. We have to teach and train our workers to understand what they're doing. What will this product, what will this machine do? And how do we plug that into the process of cleaning the buildings every day to our standard operating practices? And that's why I believe one of the most important things as we move further along here, standardized cleaning processes that address the purpose of what we're doing and that's cleaning a building for health. Now, the other thing to think about is how much work is someone doing and what's really possible mm -hmm. within a certain time frame. And that's why we do task cleaning instead of zone cleaning, because one of the most important areas of any school, college, university is the restrooms. Restrooms are a pathway to a lot of things. It's the pathway to bloodborne pathogens where diseases are transferred, where people, they, they do many different things in the restrooms and it create a lot of issues for our custodians to keep them safe, but also to keep our children safe. So, there's a process that needs to be developed that cleans that restroom for health on an ongoing, consistent basis. Then we get into the classrooms, we get into the locker rooms and, and the gymnasiums and the sweat and the different things that happen in our facilities. And then we have to look at the time our facilities are being used, Josh. Well, it's, it's adding a lot of tasks to what's an age-old, what, what, again, it's not to be insulting, but the, the age-old misconception of pushing a broom and spraying down things. They're doing a lot more with a lot more tasks, a lot more training needed from what you're saying as far as all the different scenarios as you're talking about all these things. When you talk about that 25,000 square feet, the average house being 1,800 square feet, that's 14 homes. So putting in a perspective, and I think this is part of that, what could people be doing to promote more of what they're doing already outside of the pandemic, epidemic, uh, coronavirus discussion is, bringing awareness of the fact that our custodians are cleaning the equivalent of 18 homes without any of this added stress or worry, and then couple that with the fact that they might be cleaning that space two, three, four times in a night. So bringing awareness to what they're doing already outside of the, the the pandemic worry, and then the added with the misters, and then putting that process in place. I'll get off my soapbox and let you get back to it. But is that kind of where this is where, where you think this the, the the promotion side of things should go? Is you know sharing that information and putting it into a perspective that people can relate to? Because nobody's going to look. How many square feet is the space that we're in? It is about we well, count ceiling tiles, you know. So yep. you got you know it's probably about sixteen hundred square feet. Yeah probably right we're in a we're in a i'll take a picture of it and we'll count ceiling tiles afterwards but i would bet within all certainty you're within 10 percent, especially when you just look straight up and did a run of the ceiling tiles as quick as you did but most people would come in here and just say wow this is a big space right they wouldn't understand they wouldn't count ceiling tiles and base that off a number of feet uh numbers of ceiling tiles so putting in a perspective 25 or 1600 square feet telling somebody hey someone cleans 25,000, they only hear 25 they don't know what's after it, right? So sure. it's just a massive amount of space. Well, I think, Josh, just real quick to your yeah. point about walking into a room and telling someone to clean it. Yeah. What's the definition of clean? Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important for standardized processes to be developed. Because when you workload a room like this, you think, I'm going to come into this large room, and I'm just going to vacuum, pick up trash, and walk out. I cleaned it. Mm-hmm. But there's so many touch points in this room. There are tables, there are chairs, there are doorknobs, there are light switches, there are large trash cans, backup chairs, there's a carpet. We send, sometimes what we're doing, and we're getting better at this, but we send people into big rooms like this with a little 12 inch vacuum. Mm -hmm. And so what's gonna happen, what's gotta revolutionize our industry is proper training, proper education, believing in what we're doing and the right tool for the right jobs and defining what those jobs are and the frequencies of those tasks that are ahead. And when something breaks out or a pandemic or a, a, a staff infection, yeah, the, everything shifts to that, right? Mm -hmm. Custodial services is not sweeping and using a dustpan. Custodial services has evolved into a profession 
that can make an indoor environment safe and healthy. Are you looking for a way to get inspired about your work as a facility or operations professional? Join us at our annual Maintenance and Operations Conference, Dude University in Raleigh, North Carolina, May 3rd through the 6th, 2020. You'll be able to attend an educational sessions about your day-to-day -day work, meet professionals from across the country that work in your and other industries, enjoy food, friends, and fun in the Dude's hometown. Learn more and register at university.dudesolutions.com. Let's talk about touch points because I think a lot of people have a, a misconception, misunderstanding, and I, I'm still learning a lot about this. So you task your team and show them the process and train them to hit all the touch points, and there's probably thousands of them in here. So we hit, we come in here with a mister, we come in here with, with the, the, the antimicrobials, the, the whatever things there are, and we get all this stuff. We literally kill everything in the room, right? All bets are off as soon as that space is occupied by people and they come in and they start hitting those touch points. The carriers are now carrying onto those touch points. So with things like this coronavirus or other instances, Ebola or things that happen in your experience, do you increase your frequency of doing these things? Is that an added workload or do you think that what we're already kind of doing is, is in line with what should be done? I think with what we're doing based on a good process and, and, and a good game plan and a, and a standardized program, what we are doing is the beginnings of keeping things in a relatively safe environment. Whenever you get into an issue like we're having right now with a undefined, very, you know, we, we think we know what it does to the human body, we think this, and we're taking a lot of, of, of uh, preventative steps and actions. I think when you talk touch points is frequency. So if we're gonna do it once, but this room is gonna be changed out for six times in one day, mm -hmm. the question you have to ask yourself, do I come in after every change and spray this room down mm -hmm. for the next program? And it gets very tricky, Josh, because you have to then deal with trigger asthma triggers and different trigger points that then could create another mm -hmm. issue so education and being educated on what it is you're going to do can we in custodial services prevent all diseases from spreading no no one can mm -hmm. can we minimize that yes but frequency is important mm -hmm. and that's why task over zone cleaning now is becoming more uh, prevalent because it addressed task specific task not one person trying to do everything but the whole team trying to do all the tasks that are required to create an environment mm -hmm. clean now there are times when the situation will require something not getting done and so as a leader you have to decide what is the most important event that needs to happen in this environment based on external situations the, the concern is that once you make a room ready and people enter it now you basically now begin to build another environment for germs and mm -hmm. so frequencies does is important and and you have to measure how often can you do that and what's realistic right mm -hmm. because as a leader you have to you have to act quickly you have to make decisive decisions on what's going to best Utilize those staff members. Utilize the tools you have and put that process, have that process, think it through. We've had enough epidemics and, and these types of events that in our standardized programs, we should be prepared. It's no different than safety preparedness. So training for custodial services is becoming so important, Josh, in the world that we live in today. The time is coming now where we have to focus on what is the true value of a custodial department. What tools are we going to use? How are we going to maintain those tools? What chemicals? And what training are we going to provide for our people to be proactive and to be reactive? Mm -hmm. 
the time to begin to research new equipment, new processes, new procedures, develop new trainings, teach people how to use their equipment, how to keep their equipment, hold people accountable for what they're doing, but you can't hold them accountable if you're not training them. Mm -hmm. You have to train them first. And, you know, a couple of things, have, have, and it's all unbelievable, you know, information for, for listeners in general, and it's not just now, it's always, you know, moving forward, that training, it's, it's an evolving, ongoing thing. You should always be, you know, if you're not looking at these things, and, and the coronavirus is what's causing you to look at these things, hit, hit, hit a place marker and just realize that this is something you should always be, be doing. You should always be keeping up with what's going on. Because a couple of things that I'm taking away on this and the experience that I'm seeing is, one, there's a lot of people that are popping up with all these different Sol solvers, right? And there's these people that are coming with trucks full of, of, of hand sanitizer and all this. And my worry is, one, the community is going to be saying, we need this, we need this, we need this, because I saw it on Facebook, right? The, the, the world's coming to an end and everybody's got all these suits on and all this stuff. We need to have, you know, seven truckloads of hand sanitizer. We're dumping our entire budget on a room full of hand sanitizer that we may or may not use and also have that understanding I heard one person today said that they bought a, a pallet of hand sanitizer, bottles of hand sanitizer that's in their warehouse. And I said, well, what, you know, why is it sitting in your warehouse? Why are you putting it in use? Well, what happens if we have a water shortage? What happens if this, you know, we, we have it in preparation? So I think that cus I think custodial services, M&O teams, are doing a lot of proactive things that the stakeholders outside, whether it's, whether it's taxpayers, boards, committees, board of trustees, what have you, might look and go, where is that and why aren't we using it? And it's that additional planning that we're doing, which I think people should should be educating, not just their team, but everyone. But I think it is important to tell our story, Josh. I think that's a very important. And the other thing is, when you store things, you have to know that even hand sanitizer may have an expiration date. Mm -hmm. And so preparedness, you know, I always say I'd rather be prepared and not need it than to need it and not have been prepared. Right. And I do think that we have to tell our story. Our custodial staff, our maintenance teams, and many of our educational enterprises across the country are doing wonderful, wonderful work. And they're working to always improve the work they're doing and the workload that they're assigned to do is always increasing. But we should always remember we have to continually to learn. We have to continually train. Mm -hmm. We always have to reevaluate. We always have to be prepared. And we always have to continually improve what we're doing, mm -hmm. what we're using, the tools we're buying. And all I would say to you is as you move into these times like we are today with the coronavirus or address the issue, be careful what you go out and just purchase at random, mm -hmm. the miracle product yeah, or tool that just appeared yeah. it, it just appeared mm -hmm. and now it's the best thing since we sliced bread mm -hmm. but keep doing the things you're doing as well keep those buildings clean keep teaching your people use those proven and tried processes and procedures and and don't be afraid to compliment your people for the work that they are doing because when that virus hits their school it has hit their family too mm -hmm. It has hit their world as well. And so we have to move through this together. We have to continue to promote healthy lifestyles. Absolutely. And healthy living, healthy facilities and healthy buildings and healthy processes and procedures that clean for health. Well, this has been great. And uh, I really appreciate you giving us the time and the alarm's gone off. You and I have to get back to work in the, in the uh, exhibit hall. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm going to leave with is, you know, I, I, I'm following the World Health Organization, the CDC, uh, you know, government agencies for news updates and, and everything else. And the news sells stories. That's, and, and, is, and, and a lot of it's true. Uh, Facebook is not the place to get your information from. Uh, a lot of social media, a lot of people, when somebody says, I heard or did you see and they don't know where they saw it. Um, but is there any place, well, first of all, how can people get a hold of you if they want to learn more on how to provide the healthiest space possible? How do they get a hold of you directly? And then is there any other resources that you would suggest facility professionals or people that want to be more educated in, in healthy space that they should be looking for making sure that they're not getting 
the, the snake oil of today to prevent, you know, supposed disease for tomorrow. Well, if, if there's anything I could help you with or to share more of what I know and to learn from you as well, um, you can reach me at kingsclean.com. Okay. Uh, the CDC is a good resource. Um, your vendors are a good resource. Vendors are, vendors are knowledgeable and they're a good resource. Um, there is uh, ISSA standards that are good resources. Um, the King's Intelligent Cleaning for Health is a good resource. So there are a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. Your district right down the street that may have went through something you didn't. Networking one another are good resources, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of, of resources that we can gather from. But uh, continue to do your job. Learn, don't ever stop learning. Don't stop training. And don't stop and never stop believing that what you do as a custodian, remember this, it is an essential element in educating kids. You make a difference on the indoor environment and keep doing it. And this is from a guy that's been around doing this for 36 years and is just getting started. So, uh, Greg, can't, can't appreciate you. You and I have been friends for a very long time. Yes, and uh, I can't thank you enough, not just for your friendship, but your guidance, uh, sharing your knowledge with me over the years and putting it to this podcast. We'll put all the information, uh, resources uh, on the podcast description, as well as uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot of that stuff in an upcoming blog, specifically uh, trying to help our folks with, with regards to preparation, uh, execution of, of, of uh, cleaning and taking care of their space during this very difficult time revolving around the coronavirus outbreak. So um, really appreciate it. We'll have to have you on again and uh, and share some more. I think we'll make this a, a quarterly effort or a semi-regularly effort because I think you got we could talk about this for days. So uh, uh, really appreciate it. We're going to get back down in the uh, Tasbo booth area. And uh, in the meantime, uh, keep doing what you guys are doing. As Greg said, definitely uh, applaud, your, applaud your team. This is a real tough time. Uh, for everybody, but for those maintenance and operations uh, team members out there that are really doing everything they can above and beyond, managing those 18, equivalent of 18 homes minimum a day a couple times in some cases, um, really make sure that you're taking the time to say thank you and recognize that. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for listening to the Operate Intelligently podcast produced by Dude Solutions. You can reach us by emailing dspodcast at dudesolutions.com or check us out on the web at dudesolutions.com.